ShopWWShop.com. Now you can get $10 off any order of $70 or more. You can get something cool. Like, oh my god, the 50 top incidents in WWE history. You can see there's Ed spearing Mick Foley into a flaming table from WrestleMania 23 on the cover. Wait, Mad Mike, are you talking about OMG, the top 50 incidents in WWE history? featuring such greats like Jimmy Superfly Snuka, Roddy Piper, John Cena, Big Show, Vince McMahon, and others. If you want some OMG, go click on the link at WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support the mayhem. Oh my god! Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time then attack. Don't give up what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time then attack. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show 287. How you guys doing this week? Are you ready for your weekly dose of mayhem? I stumbled it. From the dark, dark reaches of, of your mind, DJ Lunchbox. Hey, what's up, you little vaginal excretions? I am DJ Lunchbox. Uh, yes, coming to you from the dark reaches of your mind, and I have a mayhem show erection. I'm a vaginal Drum. excretion. And uh, speaking of vaginal excretions, ra- whoa, Bobby, what the hell? Uh, <laughs> hey. Wrestle- oh, no, oh, I, you switched lost a lot of I switched them. I switched them. Wrestle fan. Wrestle oh, fan, no. you Wrestle put on the college 15,000. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's Freaky Tuesday. <laughs> oh, man. I'm the closest uh, thing to vaginal excretion here. Wrestle fan from, uh, it's now si- hailing from San Antonio, Texas. How now are you hailing, doing? If you can't tell by the by the t-shirt i'm just making it obvious um so yes it's tuesday ladies and gentlemen that means it's time for the wrestling mayhem show and who better for wrestling than the wrestle fan <laughs> the self-labeling wrestle fan has joined us exactly that's a, that's not self-labeled that's my real name look it up <laughs> wrestle t fan yes uh and also coming <laughs> from uh is who- that is that anything like under t anchor uh, yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> and coming from Pooh, Keepsie, New York, is the mad one, Mad Mike. I don't know why. Wait, where's he? Where's he at? There he is. Found him. <laughs> what the, what, what up, that? everybody? Is Bobblehead it? Undertaker loves a wrestling mayhem show. Uh, motion Dead bro- man, Bobblehead. <laughs> Oh wow. man, that's tremendous! And coming from, you don't need any more introduction. Uh, and from Johnstown, PA, Bobby F. J. Town, how are you doing, sir? I drove by your place last weekend. We almost high five for reals, but I was not one of these times. If or I... did you drive by in a submarine? Because that man's in a flood. Hey, to be serious, there was floods in Pennsylvania this week. Not funny. Too soon. <laughs> I'm, I'm I told you that man's that. in a flood. I was just in talking the... to my girlfriend about uh, the people who died in the flood uh, a few weeks ago. So that's yeah, kind of shitty. Yeah. Oh, whoa. Damn and... it! Why would you have to take away my farm? Get on the couch. Bring it right down. Let's bring it down. This is not a comedy show. We are going <laughs> to be the super very, serious. It's a very week. serious no show. Oh shit! We should do that for April Fool's Day. Just be completely serious one day. And on the couch <laughs> is Chachi. Chachi says .net. Hi. <laughs> He's just waving. Sorry, audio people. <laughs> All right, this is the show. This is the, the show with the and, wrestling. And hold, hold on. What, We've what? got one more person to introduce the Master of Ceremonies, the host of Ghost, Sorgatron, on the that's ones me. and twos with his turntable app. That's me. What? Actually, <laughs> no, actually, that's Chachi with the turntable app going on right now. No, I shut it off because the iPad's dying. Oh, no. <laughs> but you owe me 20 oh, points. No. Why? Because I got you 20 points. <laughs> Oh, is that why I have people are friending me during the show on turntable in my email? I'm like, what is going on? That's my fault. You're just using my account. (laughs) That's tremendous. But it was already logged in. Hey, you know. Hey, you um, guys. Hey, we're all at. Oh, do you have something else? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to, I was going to correct Mad Mike because he was wrong and my mic was down. I'm sorry about that. (laughs) That's why, even if I would have said anything, they wouldn't have heard it because my mic was down. (laughs) But turn his mic now that you have the floor, Sorgatron, but then, that, but then nobody can step on you. Sorgatron's not on the ones and twos. He's on the, the fours. The fours? Oh. The, the one through fours, because he has like 18 different camera angles. Over there. <laughs> yes, I do. So. Yes, I do. Like, we have Chachi's crotch. Yes. We have uh, the And it really cam. is my crotch. Oh, it is. It cam. is the crotch cam. Boom. There you go. There you go. Preparation. What's up? 
Uh, hey, hey side lens, get, lens, go. We are at WrestlingMayhemShow.com if you want to find out more about us. There's a lot of bloggy blogs going on over there. We're on Twitter at, at @MayhemShow. Uh, we have uh, an email address at... Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com 412-206-WMS0-9670 for the hotline where people send us voicemails about their bad dreams that you can listen to on Gold this week. It uh, didn't sound like necessarily a bad dream. Oh, just it was a really dream. I don't know. He was getting like body slammed and stuff. But anyways, but hey, if you want them actually on the regular show, please keep it short, concise with your questions and comments under 30 seconds. Please, it's a little more digestible for us and our audience. Uh, we all have short We have bad bowels. We- <laughs> yes, like right now. Anyways, uh, yeah, and you can also, hey, we got stickers. You can hit us up at WMS Stickers, care of SorgatronMedia.com, 1535 Belasco Avenue, Pittsburgh, PA, 15216. Chachi's got them right there. Show off them stickers. Stickers! We got stickers. <laughs> stickers. Got stickers. stickers! We got lots and lots of stickers. stickers. And hey, listen, we like They're everywhere. <laughs> and we everything like... must go. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> I threw one. Sorry. And like said, we like <laughs> you know, we like the this is how the people get on. We these guys were all fans of the show. They're all part of it. We want you to be part of it too. If you're interested, you're, you're big on the Skype video, even though DJ Lunchbox's video isn't working right now. You know what uh, sucks. What's up? It's not. What's up? I gotta roll hey, all these sure? back. But uh hey, hit us up if you're interested, you want to be part of the conversation. Uh if it's not by you know, if you actually want to, you know, talk with us on the show, uh we'll see about how your Skype connection is going. Don't fight hard. Lunchbox's picture's a little really hard over the internet. Uh I get it. (laughs) And uh (laughs) hey, let's start it off like we usually guys with a little bit of the fan mail. I know, Achachi, are you ready for your room? Yeah, let me bring it up. Sorry, I had to clean up the stickers. Okay. Oh, we'll came. do we'll do Pierre first. Who wants to do Pierre K? Let's do Pierre K. Oh, 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 man, Mike, do it. Pierre K. To the WS Nation. What in the name of Magnum TA did Raw do to make it a super show two weeks in a row to have an answer to Super SmackDown one week before Labor Day? <laughs> Okay. That's all one question, folks. Uh, Everything's okay. a crescendo. Um, I would just like to point out that it is at this point I noticed that uh, Pierre Kelly didn't actually watch the original Super Raw show. Okay. Where Triple H announced that they were going to be doing. You know, that. I do have to be mm. audience. I, 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 audience, <laughs> I have to do. On, I, wow, I have to be honest. Uh, I watched that show audience. and I didn't catch that they're going to continue doing it. Like I watched the show, I watched the interview, me and it didn't either, sink honestly, into me. Yeah. It was it's it's little. I I missed the so, until further notice part. Oh, okay. basically, so and that's it, really the only indication we had. So it was and easy to miss them. Yeah, I think it, I think it was. Did anybody else? No, see? it was easy to miss because Jr. had people asking him on his Twitter feed for like the pet for like the following week if it was going to be every week. Yeah, it, it wasn't really something that that like they had Michael Cole repeat throughout the night like they usually do when they want to hammer it home. So. Right, yeah. But anyways, uh, back to the email. Okay. Perhaps they want more of SmackDown to appear on Raw more often. <laughs> I can't believe why every match involving the King with a mystery partner going head-to-head with the no-longer-new Nexus has to be a mismatch. Last week, it was Zack Ryder, and this week, Sheamus? They like him? <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> and I, I wonder I... why the pairing of Truthy and the Awful One... Are the team to take out Airborne and Kofi for the titles this Sunday Night of Champions? And help, how did Alberto Del Nono walk out of a match with Super Cena and to Hitman trying to tap Mr. Rodriguez out of here? Maybe, maybe they're preparing for that big spinner belt showdown on Sunday. But the match and the first segment had more comic relief than Santino did. But we go to the undashing Cody Rhodes. Viper match in which undashing Cody used the match the match as a weapon when sexual chocolate Mark Henry <laughs> stepped on the apron of the ring. I can't believe why Cody got the upset. But the final act involving Triple H and Punky had a war of words for control of the COO of the company. Just because it's a match that doesn't need a title of Knight of Champions doesn't mean why in the history of Knight of Champions there are a few matches that don't involve a title, but we'll see about that. See you guys later for what happened at the big night of champions. Pierre K. 
AKA Mr. Tech Wood Drive. If people are curious about the way he was reading that, he, there's some uh, random capitalizations. Um, it's either he had a problem with his keyboard, or I think he put some code in this that we could decrypt. If we oh, had the I'm gonna. Scan. All right. Well, well, um, well, the next email's right. I'm guessing I don't know if there's about a code. That. But no, uh, yeah. Thanks, PRK. You know, uh, yeah, Raw was. You know, I, I I had a comment to uh to Mike actually this morning when I was catching up on Raw. Uh, it, it there it was full of tag matches that I actually cared about because yeah. I mean, we always have that where like oh there's a team up and uh, you know just they're throwing the matches together in a tag team that are coming up at the pay per view just to uh, you know just to have something happen right um, but I actually cared it was I thought there were a lot of fun team ups last night the first half of the show like all the way up to what was Sheamus and Lawler Lord. is uh, you know I thought I thought it was really good you know um, but. Uh, I don't know, and the Night of Champions thing was another discussion, was, you know, what was it, Mike, that we, we were talking about? The, uh, the, the, the It's not a championship match, but it's probably going to be the main event. It's No, it's but... for the title of Triple H being COO. Exactly, exactly. Thank you for saying that straight for me. I, 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 that was a different way to think about it for me. Is there another non non title match going on that? Uh, at this point? not as of yet. I think I think everything mm-hmm. is a title match. They're filling out pretty nicely, and there's enough room. I mean, hell, the tag team championships getting some play. Okay, at yeah. Night of Sork. Champions. Sork, what's up? I think I have deduced the code from Pierre Kelly's oh, email. Okay, is it cuckoo kachu? Because that's what I'm kind of seeing right now. It, it's it's close. Okay, it's. Low shot of Walako because it must be. I'm French. pretty sure if you play that part of the podcast backwards, it's an excellent recipe for grim for creme brulee. And if you auto tune it, it's just that much more awesome. Uh, yes. fantastic. Speaking of auto tuning, no, I haven't done it yet. All right, <laughs> <laughs> auto tuning. Just asking. If somebody could give me a quick and simple process to auto tune the Mayhem Show, email me at. <laughs> Good times. Good times. Good times at dot com, and I will do a special edition of the of I almost said the awesome guys. We'll do one of those too if you want. Uh, that will be auto tuned. Okay, we will do something with auto tune. If you give me an easy method and cheap, not the six hundred dollar program, I'll make it happen. Okay, I, I'll make it happen. Chachi, I'm gonna write a letter to T Pain. <laughs> <laughs> oh T-Pain. my God, we can pretend to be a Make a Wish podcast. Oh, that's just oh, wrong. T-Bain, T-Bain, no, we've been I, on I, the no, air for over six years no, now. No. We have one wish. No. We would like you to auto tune our show about wrestling and vaginas. Because, Please, because it would of make my... our one wish come true. <clears throat> because of my position with things, I'm gonna have yeah. to squash that now. Exactly. Sorry. Look, T Pain. T Pain has been kind of out of the public eye for a while, so we could offer him a sandwich and twenty five dollars. He'll he'll do it. <laughs> and hey guys, maybe a night with Russell Fans and a sandwich. Guys, who's T Pain? I don't know who T Pain is. All right, go on, to YouTube. On that note, let's get back to the email. Russell Fans, just look it up like you do every other wrestling thing. This week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> This week's Riz Mail, read to, you, read to you by me, <laughs> WMS! Ultimate hate of Riz. <laughs> Once again, it is your beautiful, sexy, awkwardly tight host of the best new email interactive game show that is sweeping the nation, wait, wait. The Riz. Oh, oh, wait, wait. Not this awkwardly, shit again. awkwardly tight? What yes. the hell? In his butthole. <laughs> yes, that means... It's very tight. That means... Very tight, like a toiger? <laughs> and, and by the way, I'm sorry, Mike. I like this segment, by the way. I, I do like this segment. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and once again, it's time for the best new email interactive game show, <laughs> Would You Rather. Last uh, week... I do love I do love Would You Rather. <laughs> okay, well, maybe, th- maybe this one's better than the last one that, last week. Because that wasn't even a fair choice. Oh, come on. No, it was a good discussion. Come on. No, it, 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 oh, it was on. an 80-year-old woman Let's give the man a, a chance. Woman. Read the email. Don't let, it, don't let him hold you back. Last week, we found that WrestleFan likes his cookie stale, <laughs> as he was the only one who voted for an old Beth Phoenix. <laughs> I like him sweet, asshole. <laughs> never, <laughs> never knew I would get that response. <laughs> Wait a minute, who was the option? Beth Phoenix and who? It was a... a May Young. May Young, when she was like 21. Yeah, it was a 21-year-old May Young or an no. 81-year-old uh, Beth Phoenix. 
Beth Phoenix. I would have to pass on Mae Young. If she's not 70 Dang. or older, I'm not interested. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the only one. But see, it was before I Mae to be Young like pulling apart got a pregnant and had all that okay? baby weight. <laughs> Go touch. She caught it hand over fist. Oh, oh. If you Act. worked... Hey, oh, uh, hold on, sorry. Anyways, it's new question time. If you worked higher than Logger in WWE, <laughs> and you were starting up the WWE Network, Vince McMahon comes up to you and asks, Hey, asshole, because I'm pretty sure Vince walks around calling everyone asshole. <laughs> we're deadlocked on an idea, and I want you to be the deciding factor on what our programming will feature. We have already decided that NXT and Superstars will be on the show. Note, this is not final, it's just a hypothetical situation. So, would you rather have what WWE 24-7 does, play episodes of classic shows, roundtables, etc., or do you think people will go for WWE-based shows, sitcoms, dramas, etc., and leave the classic episodes and roundtables on our 24-7 page? What will you say to your boss? Until next time, see, not every question will be about banging old people. That's a relief. Riz. Thank God. That's good. Okay. Hey, no, that's, right. that's, 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 that's a, a really much question. better question. I think that's a really good question. All right. Um, so, one at a time. Let's stop. Would you rather... Yes. Uh, let's... Start ooh, with you. Maybe you should come back to me. Um, All right. Then you know, we'll start with no, Bobby. Yeah, no, no. I, I think um, what I think will happen... No, is, what you want to what happen. What I want to happen? Yes. Not what you I don't think. know what I, I think I I just want it to happen for one thing. Uh, but if I had to play devil's advocate and pick one or the other, uh, I would like the twenty four seven thing. I don't think it's going to be that. I think it's going to be a little bit of everything. Uh, there was we, we tweeted out an article on their Mayhem Show account uh, about um, the the WWE film division, and there was a little bit of mention about how a lot of that stuff will probably get a lot of play on the WWE Network that they're producing. So, I mean, you're going to get, you're probably going to get Scorpion King a good bit. You might, you know, let's hope. You know what I really want is No Holds Barred, No Holds Barred Weekend. Just like they do the Christmas story on that one channel. Or on I will <laughs> Give me No <laughs> Holds Barred Weekend. Just like the Christmas over story. Over and over. Hold on. I mean, maybe we can do a Thunder in Paradise marathon. Come on, man. Yes. Come on. You know, yeah. I, I want to watch so, WWE Network. Give me dramas. Time, but I out. Still don't know time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. I have to. I have to deliver a message to Vince right now. Okay. Because we all know he listens to the show. Of course. We know our truth does. Uh, yes. That's Vince, why he got fired. <laughs> Vince, I swear to God, if you do a No Holds Barred weekend, I'll murder that man. <laughs> I will he's murder. Pointing, he's pointing at me. I will murder Sorg. I got a VHS of it around here somewhere, man. All right, Bobby, you're next in my <laughs> in my lineup. So what, do you, what do you, would you rather? I would rather see original programming because a while a while back... And I, I don't think they can do this now because La Vladimir Kozlov has, has left the company. But Aww. there was a rumor about a Santino, Beth Phoenix, and Vladimir Ko Kozlov situation yes, comedy. Yes, yes. I wanted to see that so bad. <laughs> and I just think they should do that. It'd be fun. It'd be fun. You know, they that's you know what they're doing at the movies, you know. It's like, Santino, he could be really good on in comedy, be. I think. Uh, Mad Mike, I, I know you're probably a little inside baseball on this, but what, what do you think? What would you rather see? <laughs> Um, well, considering the, the stuff that we've seen from original programming that isn't necessarily wrestling based includes stuff like, um, uh, Tim White trying to kill himself, um, <laughs> the Hacksaw Jim Duggan tax evasion WWE.com storyline angle. Oh my God. <laughs> um, I remember and, that. Oh my god! And, and Fuji Vice. I think I'm going to stick with the stuff that I spent a year logging. <laughs> <laughs> a fucking yeah, year, yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I gotta say, if they did do a spin off, a spin off, and do a uh, a uh, extended Fuji Vice, goddamn name, Fuji Vice. It was. I just, I just substituted for Larry Smith on some of them. Jeez. <laughs> Russell fan, would you rather? <clears throat> Well, this is the way I see it. The, the, one of the things Riz mentions is that you're working for the company. Vince comes up to you and asks this. So I would go, which one would make more money? I really don't think 
I understand there's things like HBO and stuff like that, but and if from the way it's looking that this is going to be a channel that people have to pay for separately, I don't think people would pay for WWE sitcoms. I'm just saying. Do you think this is going to be something yeah. uh, kind of uh, looped in with the uh, with the packages? Yeah, I do. Like, like yeah, an MTV two. I I just see I don't see people honestly paying for for that kind of stuff. So I would go the twenty four seven sort of route and you know have the classic matches and the round tables okay. and stuff like that. Okay. And okay. Going back to the HBO thing, they could do Game of Thrones, House of Levisk. <laughs> <laughs> DJ Lunchbox, what would you rather? Um well I think it's I think it's all um pretty simple uh sitcoms things like that they're already on their way out the only really successful sitcoms nowadays are really like really out there things with great uh great writing talent which wwe clearly does not have um if wwe can't make a reality show work which is like printing money um i don't think they're gonna make sitcoms and shows like that work whereas the 24 7 network uh, that's pandering to an audience that you know already exists yeah uh people are gonna come to watch that uh especially if it's more accessible on regular programming and not just as a you know extra pay whatever a month crap thing that they have now so uh if it were up to me i'd tell vince exactly that and then i'd say but boss i mean really whatever you decide is best uh, uh, Chach- <laughs> also, yeah, not to that. mention, that. it would be a hell of a lot cheaper for them to just put out all the footage they already have purchased that's instead yeah, of trying to go out and them. get studio time and cast and yeah. extras and yeah. writers for yeah. sitcoms. But they look because understand. having an entire network, you need a lot of content to fill. Or they, or they just start purchasing old episodes of Cops like some other people. Chachi, did you have something to add here? Look at, I, I do. Yeah, I have my own opinion of this. Okay. Um, but first, I, I, a note to the chat room: you guys are more than willing to, more than welcome to play along. So yeah, hey, while actually, I'm talking, put your answers. And I'll read in them as soon as you're yeah. done. Type, here. damn it! But um, except for Riz, because it's your game. No, Riz can <laughs> play. Yeah. Okay. But um, you guys are missing the main point here. This is a wrestling company, okay? They already have actors, and they already have writers. Granted, they may not be sitcom writers, mm-hmm. but no, they're the there. Problem is they are hold on, writers. no, hold on, hold on. Let me finish. <laughs> if I can add a little note to that, actually, a lot of them are do come from the sitcoms. Uh, Dave Lagana worked on Friends before uh, WWE, so actually, they do okay. kind of have some. All right, well, okay, so they have all of this stuff there, mm-hmm. so it's not far-fetched to say that they couldn't do it, mm-hmm. but you have to think about what would happen if they were to do it. If they were to do that, then the product that we watch on Monday and Fridays and any other time mm-hmm. would just continue to go downhill go downhill and piss us off They'd even be more too thin yeah it's like when they had too many programs right because and... i mean you would have these people that used to be focused on working on monday and tuesdays and then the house shows and the pay-per-views would now be worried about trying to fit in uh recording schedules for sitcoms that they didn't sign up to do mm-hmm. that's and, a good point i think i it... mean so uh, if if wwe wants to make money off of this network, then what they need to do is stick with the stuff that they already have. The old uh, classic pay-per-views, classic Raws, uh, documentaries, roundtables. Basically, get rid of WWE 24-7. The, I mean, they don't have to get rid of it, but if they're going to have this channel, then they need to move that content over to this yeah. channel. And, and I do wonder, like, uh, I saw somebody in the chat room, uh, I, I, HBK fan, I think, I think they get rid of the 24-7 altogether. Uh, I, I kind of agree with that. But I'm wondering if this is going to be the replacement for 24-7. 24/7. I imagine they will keep WWE 24-7 in markets that don't get the... That won't get the network right away. So it's going to be maybe a separate offering for yeah. where it fits. And, well, or and, either and, that, or they could do it like HBO. Because mm. you have HBO, the channel that shows whatever HBO broadcasts, and then you have HBO, and then you have HBO on demand. Yeah, where you can okay. watch mm-hmm. old shows that yeah. you know were so on this week this or could, movies that they have for a certain months. Interesting. Because Interesting. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but. If I'm already paying for the high tier that I am, mm-hmm. which includes the NFL package and stuff like that, yeah. and they throw in WWE 24-7, mm-hmm. or WWE Network, I'm going to be, you know, 
really, really willing to throw on there mm-hmm. and then watch a random Raw mm-hmm. just so I can be like, oh, that was during this storyline. Let's that- be honest, though. Yeah. I think a lot of people will, if they see that in the ho- top tier above, I think they'll get that tier yeah. for the WWE. Mm-hmm. Like, they don't have, they, they, this doesn't need to be. The, well, the, the the I'm paying five dollars extra month. Nostalgia just is a very oh, yeah. very Sonic, uh, great selling guys, tool. Sonic Screwdriver in the chat room pointed out something really good. They could edit together feuds and present them as individual program blocks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ooh, that's that a lot of work. Idea. Well, it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. You know, it's a lot of work, but it's a lot less work than doing a sitcom. Yeah, you know? I mean, yeah. it, it, it's you know it's Look using at, content you already have. Is, well, the thing well, is, like, hold, on, uh, hold on, guys, 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 we're all it, hold on, uh, Mike, Mike, you were trying to say something here. Um, I I did hear a rumor uh, through the grapevine that one of the options that has been thrown around there is charging a little bit of a higher price for the network, mm-hmm. but also having the network broadcast the monthly pay-per-view. That could be interesting. That, that, that could solve a lot of the problems. That, that could solve, or at least on delay, because I know they get them a few months later on 24-7 already. Maybe no, they, no, no, I mean show them live. Oh, live on there. Well, that could be interesting. That could be interesting. And the thing, well, uh, that the thing work, that's, can, that's just, I think that's just throwing away money. And Vince wouldn't do that. It depends. It depends on the deal. Uh, WrestleFan, you got something? The, the, well, the thing HBK fan points out, I, I, I also don't see people buying a wrestling network in general. Um, I, I think... The wrestling fans and the WWE fans would pay for that network. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not going to get, you know, just your, unless it's a guy who hasn't been watching wrestling for a long time and it's decides, and oh, think, you know, let me check this out. Mm-hmm. You're going to get the wrestling fans. You're mm-hmm. going to get the fans you already have, mm-hmm. in all honesty. And if you get more fans along the way, then that's, you know, that's great. But yeah. I mean. So it, it kind of depends on what's the goal. Uh, 24-7 is is the wrestling fan will shell out the money for it. Is this just a network for people to flip through to discover wrestling and all the other stuff, not just the Monday Night Raw they're used to? Uh, Chachi is raising his hands, and I'll go to you. I, well, I didn't want to interrupt you. Okay, but, but thank um, you for raising your hand. I, I wanted to address the, the chat room. Mm-hmm. Um, HBK fan says that it doesn't seem like people would go out of the way to buy a network that has all wrestling. Uh, not only that, but it they went on to say that it would destroy them if they put the pay-per-views on the network. And I, can agree with, I can agree with half of that. I agree with the fact that the pay-per-views are a bad idea. No. No, no, See, no, you're no, looking, no I don't think hold so. Hold on, wait, wait, uh, hold on. No, let me finish. Let me finish. Okay. 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 Actually, let, let Chachi finish with his point first. All right. But, um, okay, number one, people will go out of their way to buy wrestling. Mm-hmm. They already do with the DVDs and everything. Yeah, I mean... Um, Look at look at the indie stuff we talked yeah. about. People are going out and buy that. Rest fans yeah. just bought a bunch of them. Yeah. And number and the second point. He's a wrestling um, fan. It's his name. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Two goes together. Let's go. Sorry. Go the, ahead. The second point is, uh, putting pay per views on their network mm. wouldn't necessarily kill them. No. Because what that does is that opens up this whole advertising slot that they're doing anyhow. Yeah. They can charge a. a a metric shit ton of money for people to advertise. That's the metric system shit. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, a metric shit ton of money for people to advertise during their pay per view. Mm-hmm. It'd be like up uh, kilograms. It would be. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be like a monthly Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not nearly as much as the Super Bowl charges, but still enough to keep them going. Uh, yeah. LB, what did you have? Um, you're wrong. Uh, like I said, I think. I, the the network's a good idea. I mean, look at look at a network like Nickelodeon or you know almost any cable network nowadays. All they do is just show fucking reruns and marathons of old shows that aren't on anymore. There's no new dynamic programming during the day or even late at night. It's just reruns of Perfect Strangers and Rocco's Modern Life. And they yeah, fucking cops twenty four seven. Yeah. yeah. Cops! Oh my god, there is never a time when cops isn't on TV. And, and the worst and, thing that could happen is we started out with WWE Network, and it's not wrestling after ten years like MTV. Um, all right, all right, we've been on this well, for way too long, guys. Mike, well, no, last, I, I, last I, point, Mike. Wait, wait, I'm not done. Oh, I'm sorry. I, well, yeah, I got, I got a little. I don't. I think that people um, with the right marketing and the right, you know. It would take a bit, but I think people would pay money for a, a channel that's all wrestling. They do it for NASCAR. 
They do it for football. Soon they'll be doing it for MMA. I think wrestling's got a home there. All right. Um, and now we do the dance of joy. Mike, did you, you want to talk? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, as far as putting the pay-per-views on there, I think, because, I mean, what's one of the things that we, is the biggest complaint about pay-per-views? $50 for one show. Hmm. Yeah. Now, just imagine if a WWE Looks Network like was, say, like, 50 bucks a month. You got the pay-per-view, but you also got an entire month's worth of programming. That would sweeten that pot, yeah. Uh, I mean, I think it would increase sales. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think, think it would I increase sales. Vince wants his cake and to eat it, too. And I think that's only just having his cake. And let, like someone get, let somebody else eat it. Um, well, I think that hey. they'd still offer on terrestrial pay-per-view for people who didn't want the network, too. So they are kind of double-dipping. Mm. Mm, Double-dip K. You know, I, and it, and there's this uh, <laughs> HBK fan about they get all the money off the pay-per-view buys for WrestleMania alone. Uh, they're not going to put that on the network live. And, but also, you got to think, they're not putting it on the network because they got to distribute all that money they make off of the show and advertising amongst the network, amongst, say, USA or Sci-Fi or something. CP. Uh, but whereas if they had their own network and they're putting their own content, say pay per views on that, doing let's say the same level of advertising, you got sh- you know basically what they could do is a limited advertisement sponsor, like pretty much they already do on pay per views, because uh, we still get like three or four commercials. And um, I mean UFC is even worse. Let's be honest. Right. Yeah. I mean they're, they're even Riz, worse. Uh, Riz pay more. Up a really hey, good, wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait. I mean, oh, so so instead of doing something like that, and they have to distribute amongst all the distributors. They just distribute them amongst themselves because their own their own network. It, it it keeps the money in hand, and I think it, it it you know again we're not business people. We're not financial logistic logicians here or anything like magicians here. Or financial like Panthers. That. So, That's so why. all right, Russell Van. Last well, point, and we're moving on. Okay, but Riz, it's a good email. Riz, it's a, really a great good. email. It's like half the show. <laughs> uh, Riz made a really good point. What if instead of sitcoms, you do what the NFL does and do top tens, power rankings, etc.? I could see that, but then that's kind of blurring the line of you know wrestling being a. They sport. already oh, do already that on WWE twenty four seven. They did the documentary. Yeah, it's it's already. Oh, do they? Done. It's already done. Yeah, it's called and, it's called the Power Ten. Yeah, and it's um and, and yeah, and somebody said they'd love to see backstage stuff. You know, I mean that you know TNA already tried to do with reaction. Um, you know, <laughs> to, I, <laughs> know I know, I know, no, no, I'm not laughing at you. <laughs> I, I so. was I was laughing at Riz's response. Hmm. You're fucking welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Still contributing, even though he's not on the show this week. All right, at that point, let's get to the indie minute. Peace. <laughs> I'm back. We got a little Jackie, bit, Jackie, and then we got might, a review with Cass may, Edison of AM and Russell Fan. What? Where is your thing? Where Chachi, is no, Chachi? Do not leave because this indie minute is very ladies eccentric. He's he's gone. He's Ooh, gonna, gonna miss the ladies. He's gonna it's miss a the lot ladies. about the ladies. Break so, out the, uh, for the ladies. He'll have to watch the replay. Yeah, the first note I want to make is uh, uh, the, the, every year, uh, along with their PWI 500, PWI comes out with a female 50, which ranks the top uh, 50 female wrestlers. One thing that I found really interesting, um, numbers one and numbers two are both independent wrestlers. Not Usually it's someone from WWE or someone even from TNA, but no, the top two are both from the independents. Which kind of also says something about what WWE's done, but and TNA the same way. But uh, Shimmer Champion Madison Eagles came in as number one with uh, Mercedes Martinez, who is the WSU uh, Women's Champion, coming in at number two. So uh, congratulations to both ladies uh, for making it to the, the uh, PWI 50. If you want to see the entire list. Um, there's an article on divadirt.com that uh, shows the entire uh, list of women. Uh, so go check that out. Um, also, uh, speaking of the ladies, uh, friends of the show, uh, Sarah Del Rey, along with uh, the uh, Canadian ninjas Portia Perez and Nicole Matthews and Mia Yim, uh, are going to Japan this month uh, to work for the Reina promotion, which is actually a promotion that has a, a TV time over in Japan. So that's going to be big... Uh, Big exposure for them. Um, they'll be uh, competing September 23rd, 24th, and 25th for Reina. Um, go uh, check them out if you, if you are from Japan and listening to the show. Go check them out. And uh, one last uh, ladies' note I want to make is um, 
something that I haven't talked about yet, but it's starting to come together, really, is um, Chikara usually has a big event at the end of the year. This is probably one of the biggest events I think they're, they're ever done. Uh, Joshi Mania, which, uh, for those that don't know, Joshi is the um, sort of Japanese term for a female wrestler. Um, they are having a festival of events in December, three nights of events, um, I believe in uh, Philadelphia, uh, Massachusetts, and New York. Um, it'll be all female wrestling the entire uh, three nights, uh, including girls like uh, uh, some of the mainstays in Chikara, like Sarah Del Rey, Daisy Hayes uh, will be there, as well as um, Manami Toyota, uh, Toshi Uematsu, and um, making her debut in America, uh, Aja Kong who is probably one of the uh, most renowned uh, female women wrestlers in J- in Japan. Uh, the inspiration for the people like uh, Sarah Del Rey, Awesome Kong, uh, as well as others. Uh, if you want to get your tickets, go to ChikaraPro.com. Uh, it's December 2nd, December 3rd, and December 4th in Philadelphia, Everett, Massachusetts, and Manhattan, New York. Um, so go check them out for Joshi Mania. Um, and the last, th- or yeah, the last note I want to make for the indie minute is uh, we mentioned uh, last week IWC is holding a show in November in Meadville, PA. Thank you. Yeah. Meadville, yes, thank you. Uh, two Meadville. more big names have been, two more big uh, names have been announced along with the match with Gail Kim and Tracy Brooks. Uh, Carlito will be there and will be in a match, uh, so it will be exciting. Also, friend of the show and TNA wrestler Shima Zion will go be going one on one. With Chavo Guerrero, that's so awesome. uh, that's, that's going to awesome. definitely be a great match uh, uh, of similar styles. Go check them out at ibcwrestling.com. Get your tickets for that. Um, those are the events. Um, I also want to make a note that uh, stay tuned to wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Um, in the coming weeks or so, I will be writing a review on the website because, as Sorg mentioned earlier in the show, I bought some DVDs this past weekend. From uh, I want to make our I want to make our good friends at uh, Pro Wrestling Gorilla, uh, from the California era. I've heard great things about them. I bought some of their DVDs. Holy as you can crap! See here. <laughs> you got a lot it's, of them. Wait, hold more. on. Time out. I, I, yeah. I actually got a couple more coming actually, but <laughs> oh shit! Time they were, out. They were on sale. They were on sale. Hold on, Judge has got a time out. What's up? You're a college student. They were okay. Where are you it's, getting this money? Yeah, his, his you can these things. He gets. Go to, go to highspots.com. You can get four PWG DVDs for $20. Man, why didn't you do that when they were sponsored? I know, because <laughs> that wasn't the deal then. Man, man. But yeah, so. $20 for four PWG DVDs of your, DVDs of your choice. Uh, go check them out. Uh, I will have a review on the site. Um, so yeah, and that is your Indie Minute for this week. On the phone right now is the owner of AON... All or nothing wrestling. Uh, we've been talking about them for weeks, months, even. They've, they've been, they've been captivating us with their, what's going on out there. All the violence and kidnapping and everything. So we wanted to go straight to the source. Kess Edison on the phone. How are you doing this evening, sir? I'm a little under the weather, but I'm good because we have a pretty, pretty big show coming up this weekend, actually. Excellent. Excellent. Now, uh, yeah, you guys are in the Johnstown area, uh, uh, specifically, right? In PA? Uh, Johnstown, Altoona, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, now, uh, for those of you that haven't come across you guys on the internet or locally, uh, what is AON Wrestling? Uh, how would you define, you know, what you guys do out there? And, and, and you know, kind of why, why, why should people check you out if they're not from the area? Uh, there's a couple things that are, that are unique about AON. Uh, first off, we have a family-friendly product. And that's not to mean uh, that, you know, James Ford... Or, uh, Shane Miles is going to come out with a bouquet of roses and, and, you know, sweet talk your grandmother or something. Um, you know, we, we try to, to make it entertaining so you can bring a six year old to it. But at the same time, I want somebody who's in their 60s or something to have, to have a really good time with the product. Uh, and we do that through, uh, innovative storytelling. Um, I, I, in my opinion, I think we have one of the best companies on the indie scene for storylines. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've yet to see uh, a company that has things that, that are in-depth, uh, as in-depth as our storylines. Uh, but we also have the high-flying action. We have, you know, we'll have our hardcore matches, things like that. And it's just, it's just a blast. Everybody that, that, that happens upon AON, whether it's, you know, on one of our TV shows or like you said, they come across it on the internet. Um, however it is, 
people are just flabbergasted on, on like they're just shocked that we exist and, and exist in, in the form that we are. Um, and it's, it's a blast doing it too. You know, you grow up as a wrestling fan or, or you follow it and one day you're, you're doing it and it's, it's actually like a dream come true. So we're really enjoying every minute uh, that we get to do it. Excellent. Excellent. And yeah, that's, that's one thing that's really captivated us is, is to hear like all the, I mean, the, stuff seems to be happening in AON. Uh, Bobby's, uh, let us in on, uh, that, that really doesn't ha- happen. Like, uh, you know, like we hear about kidnapping, like, didn't we hear about a bombing a few weeks ago? <laughs> uh, Israel Sharif for core, um, who used to be known as Israel St. Patrick. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, he was under contract, uh, to hide his Muslim roots. Uh, he has a <laughs> compound, which I had the opportunity to visit, um, which was seemingly against my will. Um, but Colin Blair, who is a wrestler of ours, uh, that actually hails from, uh, the United Kingdom, they were part of a, a, a the cartel. They were part of a, a group that I was opposed against, uh, for a little while. And Colin, um, yeah, he bombed, uh, ISP's compound. So it was, um, they actually burned it to the ground, which was pretty interesting. But, uh, yeah, that, that was, uh, on the heels of, of the latest kidnapping of me, actually. Um, <laughs> but I don't know how closely you guys have been following. We just had our biggest show of the year, War for Territory, uh, the fourth installment. And it, it kind of came out that, that, you know, we were, we were plotting a little bit and we were actually in cahoots. And now we've actually formed, uh, Operation 13. Project 13, and I've kind of cast a dead weight uh, of shame. Um, and now I have the, our Pennsylvania heavyweight champion, Israel Sharif Fakur. Well, Randall Fairways are our Pennsylvania heavyweight champion. Uh, but Israel Sharif Fakur and I are the, uh, the most dominant force in Allen history. And we've just begun. Mm-hmm. Uh, we haven't really cut our feet yet, but it's, uh, we have a show this Saturday, like I've mentioned before, and it's going to be for me. Hmm. I'm bear with us. I, th- I think we might have a little bit of a connection trouble on the phone, but I think we got most of that. Um, so, you know, another thing when we're talking, uh, you know, we, we've been hearing about, you know, of course you got the show online. Uh, we found out recently you're, you're starting your second show on television locally in the Johnstown area. And, and, and you said you would send me a magazine, which I have right here for you guys on video. I have never seen a magazine of this quality, a, a magazine in general for, you know, somebody, for an indie fed, you know, I mean, the, the, you know, this is, this is pretty good. Um, I, and, and I particularly like the man child's activity page going on here. <laughs> this is pretty, pretty tremendous. Um, I mean, you guys, you guys are, are pretty out there, uh, you know, uh, pretty much in people's faces in, in a lot of, uh, regular media outlets and not just the internet. Uh, can, can you kind of speak to that and how much has that lended to, to your success as a company thus far? Well, I, I, obviously with any exposure, you know, you're, you're going to live and die by exposure. Uh, and that's one thing we, we, um, recognized early on with ALN is that for people to come, um, they're going to need to know about it, obviously. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's kind of a given. Um, so we, we originally started, you know, everybody does posters and flyers. Well, we getting our posters and flyers. Um, so each poster and flyer, instead of just having a list of guys, you know, versus this guy, versus this guy, versus this guy. We started doing stories to our posters. And I don't know if you guys have had a chance to see many of them, but um, the story you're going to come see is actually told on the poster in various ways. Um, so once we just redesign those posters, so I wanted somebody to, as they were driving by, say, what is that? And get out and see, you know, the poster and stuff like that. But after that, we got onto the radio. We started doing some uh, radio market that we were going to run and be at Altoona, Johnstown, uh, Clearfield. You know, we've been around a, a couple mm-hmm. places. Um, and then we started the Crown Jewel of ALN, and that's the ALN Rundown, which is our weekly uh, TV show, which is actually on at 11.30 a.m., so it's like right in the middle of the day. We're not buried, you know, overnight or anything like that. That's not bad. Um, and that's really where um, our exposure just skyrocketed. We have uh, people who um, on a regular basis, no matter where the show is, and, and we're you... actually what's that? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. We had a couple that drove an hour and a half when we ran our first show in Roaring Spring in the pond, the rundown one day, 
and uh, you know they saw our upcoming show, so they thought, you know, well, I want to see what this is about. They drove an hour and a half, and they've been at every show since. We had some interesting digital effects going on at the call. I apologize to the listeners. We got it though. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's pretty dramatic. Attitude, and I do, you know, I do have the issue, that issue with a lot of groups. You know, around here in Pittsburgh, you don't see that. You know, you don't. I mean, I, some groups, particularly, I've seen a little bit more online uh, uh, kind of push that I'm really, I really have to say on, on fe- Facebook, YouTube, and everything like that. Some one used to have a television show several years ago locally. But and they've seen their numbers dwindling, you know, ones that have been pretty hot in the area. I mean, that's that's a fact. You know, I've been to the shows. They're, they're getting smaller. Um, but it, it, it seems like some promoters don't want to put that effort in to get their product in front of people and 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 still think kind of flyers are kind of where it's at. Right. Well, you think I mean, the demo are taking it with just flyers. So obviously, we do um, a total of 2000 flyers. Per show and 113 uh, by 19 posters, mm-hmm. but um, you know a lot of the voters. Um, everybody wants to try to make the money on pretty much everything. What we try to do um, is we're trying to build a company. Uh, and when you first five years in any company, you're not going to make a profit. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you yeah. know, and we're taking all of our profit. We're putting it towards promoting our product. Um, so, you know, we're not really, you know, as far as the bottom line goes, um, we're here because we like doing, you know, we like putting on professional playing shows. Uh, and we're, we're literally like a big family, and that's kind of cliche sounding. Um, but, you know, you gotta realize these guys have been wrestling together for years. Mm-hmm. And, uh, everybody in the AON, you know, bleeds blue. And, we, you know, everybody wants to see a seed. And to do that, we cut corners, uh, for our, for that business. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Uh, Bobby, I know you are the number one uh, AON fan. Bring it to us. I want to give you the floor uh, uh, to give an opportunity here. Do you have any questions for Cass Edison? Um, where do you see the company going in the next five years? Um, well, that's uh, two years of growth. I'm hoping to at least double that. Uh, we're actually looking into maybe running some out of station, um, be it New York. Maybe Ohio. I don't know if I really want to get out into that mess. Um, but, uh, we want to expand our territory. To me, I go by, uh, uh, quote, you know, whenever he started running TV shows, uh, Harley Race gave him a, a big problem about coming into the St. Louis area and he, my territory is where my TV shows go. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's kind of our mind take, you know, the, the ABC, uh, area, which is all of central Pennsylvania, gets down into West Virginia. We're going to run all over the place. We've actually had some uh, requests to come out uh, to go east into York. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we look into that. But, uh, you know, we're just going to keep growing. We're going to keep doing what we do. Um, we're not, you know, we're not out to step on anybody's toes. You know, we're out to grow our product, our brand. And, you know, like I said, we're not going to maliciously take on anybody. Um, you know, if people want to join up, we've had a couple feds uh, with them. We're kind of a, a at a stalemate right now. We don't know if we really want to join with anybody else because I guess we are one family, uh, like a really bunch of independent guys that we just bring in. You know, we, we to build a storyline, you have to have, um, you know, committed guys. So, in my long-winded answer, uh, I see ALN, you know, coming hopefully um, one of the biggest feds, at least in Pennsylvania. I would uh, try to get into like a Chikara or even an ROH. Um, and obviously we've got some, some way to go with that, but I think, uh, I think the, Oh, you're still there. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, I do this whenever I can actually like get on the, you know. mm-hmm. Oh, are we losing again? Uh, the, 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 uh, the phone line may be sick as well. Um, I heard something. Uh, you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, uh, Bob, you got any more questions for him? Um, I know. I noticed a couple weeks ago or months ago, I guess. Uh, you had Nikolai Volkov as one of the uh, trainers. Is he still working with the company? Uh, he works with us. He's actually uh, a really good source of information. Uh, he hasn't been up lately. He's had a lot of engagements and stuff. We're actually talking about bringing him back in uh, in the near future. Uh, he really helped design our uh, 
our wrestling academy, our school and stuff like that. He really helped us get to the ground. So he still works with us, just not much lately, just because of his schedule and everything. Cool. Um, I gotta ask you. I say we've been kind of a fan with him. I I, I know we're probably never going to get an interview him just be just for you know who he is. Uh, Manchild, please explain Manchild. I mean, I showed he's got an activity page in the magazine. Uh, can, can you explain what is up with Manchild? Manchild is just a big kid. Uh, he lives at the back of a car, and we thought you you need to come inside the ring. Um. He, a ball of energy. I've never heard him say a word, though. Um, the, the closest he gets to talking is whenever he gets off his happy face mask and reveals his angry mask. Um, and the ring, and he's pretty, and he actually choke slammed Big John McGraw. Uh, only time I've ever seen that happen. <laughs> nice, nice. Nice. All right. It looks like uh, it looks like we might be having a little bit of an extra trouble here. So I want to give you a chance. Let us know what's going on with AON Wrestling in the in the future here for people to check out. Uh, well, we've got a show this weekend um, in the Tiffin area, which is the Altoona area. Uh, aftermath, uh, basically the aftermath of War for Territory. Uh, then we're going to Belfont, uh, which is outside of State College, mm-hmm. and we're actually in final negotiations to be running. Pennsylvania, well, PSU, uh, okay. University Park campus. Excellent, excellent. And, uh, and you know, AonWrestling.com has, has all that. And like I said, hopefully when I'm feeling better, uh, maybe I can uh, visit with you guys again and actually be on uh, camera instead of on the phone. <laughs> yes, yes, we'll definitely have to connect again, and I'm hoping to make a trip out there. Uh, I actually passed Johnstown a couple weeks ago. I was like, well, this isn't that far. Um, so, uh, so thanks a lot. Kess Edison, AONWrestling.com. Go check them out. Uh, something going on in Central PA that you might not have heard of in, uh, whatever parts you're in. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you guys. Thanks for the opportunity. All right. Now let's go t- kick it to, uh, a couple clips from WMS Gold and we'll be right back with your remember when for this week. Mayhem. All right, thanks a lot, man. I'm sorry about the phone. Are, are you? Are we cutting out any on your end? No, you guys. Stop. Don't let him do it, freaky. So I go back to high school wrestling and I sprawl, which is interesting with a guy's hand on your crotch. Yes, he had a match with uh, Cloudy from Cheech and Cloudy. Because uh-huh. I remember hearing of Chimera the wrestler. I You're dreaming about indie wrestlers. And not of the opposite gender. Now wait. Hey guys, it's the Russell fan here, and it's time for a little segment that we like to call Remember When So uh going back to two thousand and five, that was a crazy year. Crazy, crazy year for professional wrestling. We had new ideas coming up, different things by, you know, both brands, you know, it was really almost like a competition sorta. Um, but the one thing that sticks out in my mind is, uh, a little tiny feud that went into the fall of 2005 between Kane and the man that we all love here on the Wrestling Mayhem show, Gene Snitsky. Now, Snitsky, he was an interesting little fellow there. Um, basically, uh, he had his debut match on Raw as a somewhat no-name jobber, uh, to face Kane. Uh, who was doing things with Lita, like, you know, making babies and such. And they uh, they had the thing with Lita interfering, and Snitsky nails Kane with a chair, Kane falls on Lita, no more baby. Okay, so then we, you know, they take this horrible situation, what can we do? Let's use this to make Gene Snitsky the ultimate heel. And how are we going to do that? We're going to have uh, Chris Jericho do his uh, highlight reel little segment, bring out uh, Trish and Leah, who were, who were feuding at the time. And then out comes Gene Snitsky with a baby. Yes, that's right, with a little baby boy who uh, he kept talking to and uh, was, was going to give it to Lita and then said, no, it's mine, and I'm going to do what I want with it. And then he punts it into the first row of the crowd. And it, I think the one thing that I, be- I believe Jerry Lawler noted, because uh, this was on the uh, OMG Top 50 Incidents DVD that you can get at Um Yeah, uh, the thing Lawler noted is 
it probably meant to be more serious. Like, it was supposed to be a serious thing. But then it kind of turned into, <laughs> hey, remember that time Stinsky planted the baby? Oh, yeah, that was fun. Um, so, yeah, and that was my part of uh, Remember When. Hey, Mike, do you, do you remember anything? Hey, hey, Russell fan. I remember when I was watching the DVD. And, I mean, granted, that, that wasn't that long ago. But I, I, I was really looking forward to something that I would have sworn on my firstborn was going to be on the disc. And it wasn't. And I was absolutely shocked. And no, it's not like a, a Chris Benoit, Owen Hart type of thing. None of that. Like, it's stuff I know they can show. Because they showed quite a bit on the DVD. And I'm absolutely floored that one of the things that they didn't have on there was Mr. Yamaguchi's son with Kai and Tai trying to chop off the big Valbowski. <laughs> wow. I I'm choppy, absolutely choppy, yo, floored it's that I, choppy choppy, your pee pee, was nowhere on that disc. Absolutely floored. Because that was goddamn hilarious. And they even brought in John Wayne Bobbitt onto Raw. Oh, God. Mm, yeah. They brought John Bobbitt onto Raw. I mean, my God, people. That, that's how serious this fucking gimmick was. It was hilarious. Because Val Venus had just slept with Yamaguchi-san's daughter. And Kai and Tai beat the shit out of him. Kai and Tai was... I think it was four guys back then. It was... Taka, um, Funaki, Dick Togo, and Men's Teo. Yeah, well, and well, they I, all, I think they all I kidnapped that Val thing. Venus, brought him to the back, tied him up in like a fucking crucifix position. He was butt ass naked with a table right in front of him that supposedly had like this huge <laughs> kielbasa like Valboski resting on it. And Yamaguchi said a fucking samurai sword like he was Hiro Nakamura. And it was funny as shit. What, yeah, wasn't, uh, from, I, from what I remember seeing about that whole feud sort of thing, what, wasn't like, Ta uh, didn't like Taka have a tag match with Bao and didn't he like turn on him to join Kai and Tai? Yes. That is exactly it. Yeah, accurate. that, that, that was. served you well, something. Russell fan. Oh, God. But you know what? Oh. That's what oh. happens when we. Remember when? <laughs> and of course, this is a DVD you can get. If you want to support the Mayhem and you're looking at this DVD anyways, we got a link right there on WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We really appreciate the clicks. I, I, there he is. There it is right there. There it is. It's <laughs> actually a really good buy. It's got a lot of cool special features on it, too. And including said, an outtake reel of Jerry Lawler talking about some of these moments. And, and you know, and that's one of the things when we try to do these affiliates and sponsors and everything. This is this is stuff that we're seriously into. We do we do Audible. We do uh, uh you know we're we're into that that uh, killer controllers we were talking about last week, uh or evil controllers. I'm sorry. Uh and and we bought the DVDs as much as we say about WWE. We're still fans and and clients or uh, not clients. Uh, um, yeah, <laughs> I, I think we audience. frequent WWE shop a little bit. Yeah, a little bit, especially yeah, you. I least, hope you're clicking that banner. <laughs> Half my salary probably went back to them. <laughs> <laughs> and they know that. Hey, uh, LB, I know you got to you got to know it. You got to head out here, but you want to talk about something that's coming up next week here uh, coming from you. Yes, uh, this past week I went to a, um, I went on a family vacation. It was very nice, very enjoyable, and I had the, um, interesting experience of going to a NASCAR race. Uh, and oh. I basically spent my whole time there at the race thinking, good lord, what WWE could do with a crowd like this. So, um, I, uh, next week I want to get into the finer points of what WWE could learn from NASCAR and vice versa. Uh, and I also want to plug, uh, thoughtfulriot.com. I am doing a, a blog a day every day this month. And, uh, it's, uh, it's coming along in preparation for the book coming out. So thank you, gentlemen, for a good show. Have a good rest of the show. <laughs> this is the session. Uh, we'll yeah, miss good you. Night. Thank you, LB. Thank you. Now, I'll uh, miss you most of now, all. I know, hey, there's a TNA pay per view this weekend. I watched most was of it. Was there? Oh. You couldn't tell from Impact. No, come uh -huh. on, come on. But by itself, let's look at the pay per view real quick without by too itself, much it anger. Oh, I was hoping you have a little bit more review of that while I get no, somebody no, else. No, <laughs> That's a review. Thing. So long, everyone. Try the veal. 
da, 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 da. no, I'm kidding. <laughs> you um, shouldn't eat baby cows. There was what? it was um it was a TNA pay per view. Yes, it was. It was. <laughs> um, let's just uh, ex- extremely predictable mm-hmm. was my only problem. It was good. Did you enjoy any of the matches at least? There was a good. I think the best match was probably Rude and uh, Gunner. That was a good match. That was, you know, pretty good. Um, but my thing with this is what I think happened. Because we watched, I mean, we, we watched the TNA pay per views every year or every uh, month. And we're like, oh, well, you know, it's going to suck. And it does suck. But hey, at least there's this match that's going to be really good. You know, La- uh, last month it was that six man tag with Immortal and uh, Fortune. Mm hmm. Uh, you know, usually it's something with beer money and the machine guns or some X Division mess that we really like. Um, that kind of like, oh, well, at least that match was really good. Um, we didn't have that. And I think TNA, I think TNA knows that. And I think they thought that the X Division title match was going to be that, oh, it's fine. At least this match is good. Uh, but that match really wasn't good at all. Sorry. Wasn't. Mm hmm. And not just because, and I know what people think. It's, it was not just the one party involved, but both parties. It, nothing against the guys, but it just didn't come off as a good match. Now, what do you think? You know, what what about the series in general, though? I mean, uh, I I kind of like. I I know, Mike, you 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 kind of have some some technical issues with it, but I kind of like the storyline and everything with the Bound for Glory series and how that kind of drew out in the end. The storyline was fine. I thought I thought, I, it, was, I thought it was a good story. Yeah. I just I got annoyed um, the because the, the first match was Bully Ray and James Storm, and for some reason they were the final four, and it was going to be like tournament style where it's like this guy wins, this guy wins, they face each other, the winner wins the whole thing. But they were still going by a point system because they mentioned that James Storm had to win by submission. Yeah, that's a little weird. Yeah. I... Um. Wait, they said they met. They said he had to win by submission. Yeah, that's why he was going for submissions the entire time. Oh my god! Yeah. All right. Um. So if he beat huh. him regularly, and but he pinned him, he wouldn't have gone on to the finals. So, so wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. First, TNA said, when this whole thing started, that the top four guys would be in a four-way match. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then, then they changed it to two singles matches. Right? Right. Um, if they were just going to do whoever had the most points why didn't they just have the two guys at the top fight yeah i don't i don't know i think well mainly because there was a tie between the top two i think but i don't i don't know i don't care what the the problem was i hated the match just in general because they do it it had to have had a tna finish because they so, do the thing where Bully Ray uh, spits beer in James' eyes and he kicks out. And then James is about to do the same thing. He misses and hits the referee. and that, But then he locks in the submission and mm-hmm. Bully Ray taps out. The ref rings the bell and he's like, oh, I won. And then he dis- but, or he gets disqualified. But, WrestleFan, I have a question. Um, So are you are you trying to tell me that if James Storm... Won the match by pinfall. Bully Ray would have advanced. Yeah. Wow. Doing it wrong. <laughs> and, just, and just, I just, go back. Just doing I, wow. it wrong. I'm sorry, Mike. I go. I go. Everything I go, wrong. Wrong. I go Which back. My man. You know because because Storm <laughs> lost by DQ, he loses ten points, and because he lost ten points, uh, Rob Van Dam became number four. <laughs> so I was like, so wait a minute, like what? But the- it doesn't matter at that point because it's so. Whatever, I don't night. know. Yeah, I, it was interesting idea and and some of the execution, you know, as we usually expect with TNA. But yeah, and again, my, go back to look at the people doing this. This was a big three month sort of thing mm. to you know determine the winner and you know they get the world title shot and. I'm happy with who won it. Yeah, I think it's going to be a good match, but I do not see Rude winning the title. 
Yeah. No. Just saying, we'll see, see, that's hold the hold problem. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And for that reason, I find this whole thing pointless. <laughs> well, all right. See, there are, there are a couple fundamental, like, if they want to do this again, which I actually encourage they do because I like the concept of it. Mm. They put wrestling on the TV, so whatever. Yeah. And, well, and front and center, you can't, you gotta be, I, I loved how they did the, the, the live thing. Sorry, Mike, go, go back to you. Okay. There, there are a couple things that I would change. Um, one, when you have the Bound for Glory series matches, just the series matches, you don't have to do this for the whole show, have a crawl on the bottom of the screen that shows the point stand. Especially if you're going to make the point so important that James Soren had to win by submission to even advance. Well, That's I think they, no, I disagree. I think they did a good job of noting the points. I, I don't think so because I didn't know that mm-hmm. if James Soren was match, so far well, okay. out of it that he had to win via submission. Yeah, why was stupid. he even in there in the first place? Uh, I, I, got, I, I the do finals say. and the semifinals were stupid. I got. I gotta say, I watched uh, the last two impacts back to back. Uh, for, first thing I know, no, I don't, I don't think they clarified that one, uh, uh, very well, uh, at all. Uh, now, and the other thing, the other thing I think is more important here is looking at uh, one, I, and you guys have been talking about this on Twitter, I know, uh, those shows felt a lot bigger than the pay per view did when they came back to the United mm-hmm. Isn't that you know interesting, and those, guys? They're gonna feel a lot better afterwards, cause guess what? The main event for next week, or this Thursday is mm. Ric Flair versus Sting. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be a great match. Oh, you know what would have been better? Having it on the fucking pay per view. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I think you, you definitely. Where it's a match you, where if Ric Flair wins, Sting loses his career, mm-hmm. and if uh, if Sting wins, he gets his match with Hogan. I really think I think it's, it's painfully obvious that that they are more interested in the TV than the pay per views. I, I I swear they're just in a, a horrible contract they need to get out of, and they're just biding their time. I, I I think that's what's happening, and they're going to do something different. I, I had the kind of recollection of you know how we talk about they don't know if they're TNA or Impact Wrestling right now. Jeff Jarrett has said they're in a brand kind of a brand situ- switch fluctuation right now. I think their TV show is Impact Wrestling under the name Impact Wrestling. I bet there's something weird in their contract where their pay-per-views and other outside marketing still has to say TNA. Their contract is with TNA Wrestling, and they can't officially change the name because that screws up the advertising with the cable operators and will piss off. Uh, just bail the, out. Just yeah. bail out. I, I I think there's a lot bail of complications. And you know do... what? There it, it, and it's 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 you know front office guys. This is this this is this is the people making decisions. Of, you know the throw hardy. You know in the main in main slot of the television show going into the pay per view. Which yeah. if you were a wrestling booker, you probably aren't going to do that. I I wouldn't think. But there are people not involved with wrestling running this. Dixie Carter I think, that, okay, I mean, and, has no has no no deal with it. Versus Vince McMahon came up in the business. He understands it. You know, no, it's, I agree. It's the, I, no, it's the, it's the good part, and it's it's the problem. It's and, what and, we've and been just saying like, for you know yeah. three years now, and I understand that completely. Going back to the but series Sorg, thing, Sorg, at this point, it's not even about the wrestling business. It's about marketing. Mm-hmm. You have a pay per view coming up. Yeah, like all right, if that you. If but we but had, then I'm going back to that. They don't care about the pay per views. I know the pay per views are okay, not just, number one. Their number one is getting. Sort no, of hold on, let me finish. Should, like, hold on, hold on. I, their number one is is getting the international. That's where they're making their money right now. They're then getting the TV ratings and and making. You know, they might not even do pay per views overseas. For why not even time. try to make money? <laughs> why not er, try to make money in other departments? I bet you they're making well, more money. Make any nope, excuse why they shouldn't I bet you they the paper. Oh, no, oh, guys, guys, stop, 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 stop talking over each other. Give each other. No, okay, there's no, there's no reason. That's no reason why they shouldn't advertise their pay per views. Hmm. There's no reason why they shouldn't have announced the main event for the pay per view twenty minutes before the, or an hour and forty minutes into the last impact before the pay per view. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that's enough TNA. We're done. We're done. Yeah. We're good. Let's enhance Yay. our calm. Everybody breathe. Buddha style. So we can get it to some more positive things. There probably won't be. I have you noticed behind me, Hot Wheels has joined us, leading the way right into the chat. How you doing, Wheels? I don't know if I have your audio. Ah, where's his audio uh, at? Uh, oh, no. Audio Whoa. fail. Whoa. Oh, no. Are you there? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. 
Someone needs a headset. I'll call him back. I'll call him back. Well, right, okay, so back to music. DNA. No, yeah. absolutely no. not back I to never DNA. got to finish uh, my wait. point. You no, guys we're, we're done with DNA. While, while, while you try to get wheels on the line, mm -hmm. you have my prize over there? You have your, oh, it's in my uh, okay, that's fine. computer bag. That's fine. Um, so, an update on last week's contest. There's still no winner. I've had about 15 emails with guesses, and they were all wrong. Is it like a lottery? Does it like keep we did multiplying? Get yeah. <laughs> I've been responding to them. No okay, worry. I got okay. It. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, no, we uh, we got about 15 emails. Um, uh, granted, a few of them were from the same person. Uh, multiple guesses. They're giving it a shot. They're giving it a shot. Here you go. There's the prize. Oh, there it is. <laughs> but, um... So the the question, the the trivia question was on four twenty of two thousand six, Kurt Angle was arrested, or not arrested. I'm sorry, Kurt Angle had a court date on four twenty of two thousand six. For what crime? I don't want to know if he was convicted or not convicted, but um. Yeah, I just want to know what crime he was in court for. No, it was like you said; it was his least, his, yeah, his it, it's, lowest. Yeah, it was the lowest thing that he's ever been charged for. Mm -hmm. and, so, and, and as far as uh, qualifying this, we looked up the legal documents. Yeah, I have, I have a copy of we, the legal we, document. We have the accent access to the legal documents yes. here. So uh, I have. The legal angle, you going down? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Wheels, are you back? But um, nope. Uh, I don't know what's going on there. So there's still no winner. So we're just gonna carry it over one more week. Okay. Um, if we don't have a winner by next week, then I'll 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 tell you guys what the crime was. Chachi's uh, hey, there he is, there is. really loud. That's but, um, the wrong knob. I've been turning down Bobby this whole time. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Sorry, so Chachi. winner gets. These wrestle buddies. And send it to good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com if you're interested. So, yes. Uh, sorry about that, Wheels. It figures that as soon as I try to be funny and say that about Chachi, you find the right button. I, I didn't even hear what you said, honestly. It was, no, no, it was you, really you loud. Blown out. I don't know what yeah. you said. Good. <laughs> well, thanks for so joining wrestling. us, Wheels. So, the chime in for the rest of us. We can only replace LB with another black man. Exactly. But go. I'm a black man. <laughs> you are not what? a black man. No. Chachi, Everyone you are can't a black, be a black man. man. I'll agree. I don't you think you so, are a black man from the waist down. It, fucking right. <laughs> <laughs> that's qualified right there. All right, let's go to... What do we have to talk I have a couple more notes here. Um, There's a new wrestling uh, wrestling related reality show coming out. Oh, what's uh, this? Let's not talk about that either. Wait, are we talking about the midgets? <laughs> no, we're not talking about the midgets. Okay, then we can proceed to talk about it. Uh, uh, former WWE diva Tori Wilson and former WC or WWE superstar Zeus uh, will be starring in a new reality reality show called The Z Team. Um, they were they're joined by a bunch of people who I don't know who they are. Um, it's apparently uh. What is it? It's, it's a reality show that they. It's I guess it's sort of like the A Team, but uh, 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 where is a, it? The reality show. Uh, They're uh, contracted by law enforcement agencies and concerned citizens all across the country to confront real I'm life and death situations on the streets of America. I'm sorry if this guy, if, if Zeus came to my front door trying to serve a warrant, I will just do whatever the hell he wants to say. And Doesn't for, Zeus have like a lazy eye? Yes. He, he yes. has no eye. Yeah, why did they give him a gun? Did they see Friday? And 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 for for different reasons, same thing for Tori Wilson. Hello. Um, Hello, that, Tori Wilson. That, that could be fun. <sighs> that could be a fun show. Guys, uh, guys. Um. It, I think this is all doing a disservice to the Big Boss Man. <laughs> or are you sure it's not a, in tribute of the Big Boss Man? No, no. The tribute to the Big Boss Man was this past Sunday and his tag team partner, Akeem. What? That was this past Sunday. What? You didn't see all over Twitter everyone showing love for the Twin Towers? 
Oh. oh. Okay. What? Well, no. Not the... uh, I... What's that in the game, baby? I guess, I guess he's I'm a lot. I sit there out. and I oh. look at the picture of that whole team and I go, it's a really bad A team. I mean, you got Zeus as Mr. T. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck are the other two guys? <laughs> Exactly. Like C-level stars, I'm sure. Hold on so. one second. Riz, What's handle up? the chat room. All right, All right yeah, yeah. Um, handle it, Riz. Anyways, uh, let's see what we got. Uh, Night of Champions. We, we talked a bit about Night of Champions already. I mean, we'll... Hey, does CM, CM Punk on the mic. Fantastic. Come on. Fight bomb. Fight bomb, yeah. Um, <laughs> that, you is that, give him is that, is that the bomb. only... That's like, all the comment I have. I don't know. I was hoping that starts something. But uh, uh, I was going to say, is that CM is Punk. that the only review you have from Raw? CM Punk I, on the I, mic. I was trying to talk, but someone cut off my mic. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Shut it. <laughs> uh, no, we well, we talked a good bit about the teams, the hack teams, and everything before. Uh, but going into Night of Le- or God, I want to say Night of Legends. I did this Night last year, didn't I? Night of Ch- I you do it every, every year. year. I, I I'm, I'm, I'm more excited for Night of Legends, honestly. Um, <laughs> I, I yeah, that's truth. It's truth. Uh, come well, on. it's the only pay per view that where you can guarantee every belt's going to be there. No, you can't. No, you can't. Well, <laughs> they have. Uh, it definitely, should be. It should be. Uh, last couple. Well, they years. haven't had SmackDown yet. Yeah, yeah. Um. Oh, and I think I think every title is accounted for, except for maybe Cody Rhodes' IC belt. No, except belt. for Cody. Cody doesn't have a match yet. Technically, and I'm sure they'll do something. Yeah, I think it'd be great if they throw him in there with Daniel Bryan or something. Although, you know, it would be really awesome. I, hmm. If we see a match from the WWE Internet Champion, there you go. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! Man, exactly. that was tremendous. Right. That was tremendous. I, um, I actually read some of the uh, SmackDown spoilers. Uh, great. Don't read spoilers. Don't say don't spoilers. No spoilers. Come on. I won't say spoilers. anything. We right. only spoil TNA because no one cares. Ah. Woo, um, woo, woo! <laughs> you know it. You know it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we had, hair, we, we had an like your hair. Hey, one of the interesting discussions I had with Micah earlier today was about this. You know, uh, there, and, and I threw the question out too. I mean, we seem to have WWE is trying to go old school and, and resurrect a few initiatives, like you know, and, and actively in storyline too. You know, at the Intercontinental Belt, Cody Rhodes is trying to bring respect back to the title, like it used to be with Mister Perfect back in the day and everything like that. Uh, we, we have the tag team division says we're going to mean something, you know, now, you know, which, you know, and we'll see how it goes. We'll see if it lasts past the pay per view, you know, um, and, and and even there were some some mentions with uh, Vicky Guerrero. Uh, through this interesting thing with Jack Swagger and Dolph Ziggler about yes, the worms behind me, I know. Um about her doing a, sta- a stable. I think they even threw it back to classy Freddie Blassie as a reference. Um I mean what do you what do you guys think about this? Is it is this you think this is the, the, the you know are they being successful with it, you know? That thing is just freaky. Yeah the worm is freaking me out too. <laughs> <laughs> w O R M <laughs> all right, all right. Anyhow, um, what was your question? Everybody's distracted by the worm as I was going on about that, weren't they? Yeah. Everyone the is belt, distracted tag, by my worm. The IC belt, the tag team belt, the the the, the maybe having a stable. I mean, I, is this a throwback that that we want to see? Yes. Mm-hmm. I, sure. I, I agree. I, my favorite part of wrestling mm-hmm. was back when you had the Nation, mm-hmm. the Biker yeah. Gang. No, uh, that, that was not so much. I, I'm talking like Bobby, the Heenan, the the Bobby Heenan the family. Heenan camp. Yeah, the, the camps. The Slick had a bunch of them. Those were camps. But they the were like they had a man. <laughs> Did you like the them? Of it. And actually, then who brought it up that uh, they should throw uh, McGillicuddy and uh, Octunga under Vicky Guerrero? I told you that this afternoon in chat. That would, That's right. Uh, that would be a good idea. That would be. Those are if there is anybody that needs a mouthpiece manager. What's Honestly, those freaking guys. I mean, you've got Terry Lawler calling them out about how, having not, you know, no personality. I think, I think Otunga well, has a yeah, that was... He just doesn't give the chance to show it. He was completely on about McGillicuddy. I don't know. I don't that know. That was the glory of managers, though. Yeah. You, 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 you put, put, would be awesome. You put the you people. Stick, oops, you stick sorry. Otunga and McGillicuddy with Vicky Guerrero and keep her with either Dolph Ziggler or Jack Swagger. Eventually, you well, can get it to a point. Where Vicky develops a crush on Otunga, and you boom, go. you bring in Jennifer Hudson for a big payday on a pay per view. There you go, that could be fun. <laughs> but I mean, that no, uh, what you do is you bring back the managers. Yeah. For these 
people who are quite frankly are terrible on the mic. How many people yeah. <laughs> back in the day? Let's, let's let's take a look back. How many people back in the day never would have gone anywhere without a manager? Umaga. I, I'm even going mm-hmm. not even going back that far. That was the most recent <laughs> right. awesome manager pairing we've had. Uh, but you go with you know somebody like Kamal, somebody like uh, the Warlord, the Barbarian. Right. You know. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, uh, who else? What? Uh, no, you know Berserker. what? Akeem Berserker. Akeem Us. was interesting. What? I I, I found it. <laughs> you found what? <laughs> the thumb drive and the keychain attached you know, to the lay. Do you want to show them so you're not just like weird <laughs> reference thing going on? You I don't. You found a thumb drive on the lay. I, I what? It's from like I don't know where it came from. I, I was um, just amazed that there just was something. Just two words together. Thumb. Drive on a lay. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, it was just it distracted me. But but, um, but anyways, yeah, but you know, with, with the managers, anyways. Um, hey guys, you know who wouldn't have gotten anywhere without a manager? Hmm. Yokozuna. Yeah. Exactly. Probably. Yeah. 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 The and, Undertaker. Yeah. Like uh, Riz mentioned in the chat room. Yeah, I mean, how long was it before he did an interview? You know, and even mm-hmm. I mean, they're very methodical. He, he kind of developed that. I'm sure he wasn't great at it to begin with. Um, yeah. You know, and that that's that was but the one of the things that uh, one of the things uh, I think people started saying when uh, when the diva season of NXT came around, use those girls as managers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You could. You know, I really wish like uh, like I always wanted Oksana to manage Goldust because I thought they made you a just great want pairing. Oksana on TV more. Well, I know, but yes. I, they but they had a good chemistry they and a did. good pairing, so you know. But I mean, use you know they they have the talent. It Hell, depends. Bring back- it depends though, Russell fan. Because remember, a few years ago they were just kind of throwing girls in, like 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 uh, uh the Dudley bro- the Dudley boys had had a uh, uh, Stacy Keebler for no particular reason. Oh, but that was she cool, wasn't though. a mouthpiece. Uh, no, no, know, they uh, had her for a reason. What did she do? It, it was during the alliance, and um, she was feuding with Tori Wilson, and she needed muscle. Okay, okay. I mean, it. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Oh, wow. Chat room. <laughs> Thank this, you, Wolf. This this chat room is insane. As they're going nuts tonight. You guys Sin, are going nuts. Sin, Din, Bin, and Larry Carr <laughs> versus <laughs> Doink, Dink, Tink, and Donk. <laughs> Bin Carr. All right. To be fair, the four Doinks are called Doink, Dink, Pink, and Wink. Hey. Yeah. Oh wow, he gets he gets some wrestling nerd points for that I one. Hey, was a stink in I'm a fucking historian. Of course, I, don't, I, don't I know that shit. And Jerry Lawler's fucking um royal court were cheesy, sleazy, and queasy. Hey, which can actually all be used to define Jerry Lawler. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. True. Especially and then there was, Mexican food. There was also uh, Sin, Sen, San, and Sun. But I, I liked. I liked Larry Carr up better. Yeah. Larry, I, I swear, there better be midgets in cars by the end of the year. Oh, there they, has to be. It's kind of made for it at this point yeah. with, with yeah. what they're doing. They need to do with what Wrestler. Did, did you see the, the uh, Sin, what? Sin Carla knows English. What? I didn't see that. No. Like, no, no I that's, that's, he got a whole new move set, brother. That's yeah. Unicara. 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 But, um, Unicara, Unicara knows English. Jim Carr is doing the most interesting though ever <laughs> thing though ever on SmackDown. Yeah, yeah. What's that? What's that, Josh? <coughs> uh, back to my <laughs> my other point. Sorry, I was laughing at the chat room. Um, but they need to do with wrestling what they do with porn. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no! I love where this no. is going. Go for it. But I mean, I love when the sentence starts like that. I mean, you have all these pornos based off of real TV shows. Like, I mean, you can find a Simpsons porno. You can find like, uh, like the, like the uh, Hogan's Knows Best, uh, right? Porn that we, we talked about. about last week. The Batman the, one. Yeah, the the Glee porno. There's all- a Glee porno. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to watch the yeah. Glee porno. Uh, <laughs> is there singing in the Glee porno? No. Because I would actually actually watch wait. It. There has yeah, to be singing yes, in the there Glee, Glee, Glee is. porno. There is singing in the Glee yeah. porno. But um, <laughs> I'm buying this for Missy for her birthday. But, oh, uh, what the hell? <laughs> right. You didn't, you didn't buying your wife porn? Anyhow, for her birthday. Those so, uh, but I mean, you do. Not the same thing with that, but uh, take I'm take sorry. wrestling. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I pulled up a site. I'm sorry, I can't pass this up. I pulled up a site for the Glee porn, <laughs> and one of the first comment, which is five stars, it says, 
Or first they're like, this is going to sell like a billion copies. Response, nope. Why bother when you can jack it to the original for free? Oh, <laughs> wow. Oh. Oh. But, um, oh, it's so true. You take you take wrestling, <laughs> and you do the same thing. Parody, only it's all midgets. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Little people. Oh, I don't care. I'm sorry, I lost where we're going with this. <laughs> yeah, no, that's where I was going with it. Keep watching your you, you parody. You parody normal wrestling with little people wrestling. No, no, because if you if you mix <laughs> WWE with all little people, you get the DX court segment again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I know you guys didn't like that. I loved it because I loved midgets, but I know I know it was not well received. Because it really, like, it really kind of was just Triple H and Shawn Michaels as Gandalf having in, heading into Hobbiton. <laughs> okay. Oh, I, oh, wow. Wow. I don't wow. even know where we went. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's going back, to the going back to the manager thing? Yes. yes. William Regal. <laughs> please. Yes, like please. I said. God, please. <laughs> like I said, William Regal. Yeah. And Wade Barrett. Mm-hmm. He he may need a manager. He not so much as yeah. much as the other guys. Yeah, he doesn't need Drew a Drew McIntyre. And there's also that thing where where people would pop up that that made him look more legitimate, like that. You know, um, I, you know, you you have like Rick. Let's say Rick Flair. He he, you know, Rick Flair wasn't really had to be introduced to the WWF audience, and we had like like the Brain and Mister Perfect that kind of bridged that gap. Is like, oh, this is who this is. You know, people don't know all that history. Um. I'm trying to think somebody else. Like, Harley Race managed a bunch yeah, well, of people. Well, all right, you guys don't want superstars. Not so but, much, no. Um, but there was a whole gimmick for about a month and a half that they could have done on SmackDown, and it would have been gold, Tony where Alex. Tyson Kidd mm-hmm. was looking for a manager. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And they brought in, like, I think Jimmy Hart, Vicky Guerrero, um, Albert, um, uh, Estrada. Yeah. Yeah. Armando Estrada uh, and Doc Hendricks or Michael Hayes or whatever he wants to call Maxine. himself. <laughs> but yeah, he was looking for a manager. Yeah, and, and they always do that. Everyone. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, and I think you talked about, you know, they're trying to build tag teams and stuff like that. They're doing a lot of that on Superstars and NXT because it's giving them a chance to try stuff out that, you know, w- see if something will work. They had a tag match on Superstars. It was, uh, Tyler Rex and Kurt Hawkins because, uh, they had like that, uh, they had that backstage segment with, uh, Wade Barrett when, uh, uh, Alberto was doing his rounds trying to find someone to, you know, help him against Cena. And they're like, yeah, we're planning something big. I'm like, uh, okay. They they teamed on superstars against uh, Percy Watson and Titus O'Neil. And oh yeah, they, that's <laughs> <it>. yeah. <laughs> but they, uh, and they played off the like with the uh, Watson and O'Neill, They played off the fact that they're both like former NFL players and stuff like that. So you know they kind of play into that thing. I think they have the, like they had the tools to make good tag teams. They just gotta you know uh, run with it. I also heard a rumor that Ricardo Rodriguez is supposed to get a stable. That could mm. be pretty cool. Could be yeah, pretty Ricardo Rodriguez could manage um, Alberto and Hugh Nicara. Hugh <laughs> Nicara. <laughs> that would be and cool. The little midget wrestler will be Mini Cara. No, it would be a uh, smart car. Smart car. <laughs> oh, that's smart right. Ricardo, Ricardo, Ricardo actually uh, stable He comes to the ring in a smart car and just beeps it. Ace Well, actually, give me a little Ace, Shriner. Ace Well, amazing. Uh, actually, Ace Wellby in the in the chat says Ricardo has a stable in FCW. That, that's what I remember. He does. Uh, um, it's him. Yeah. Uh, a couple Shut other guys. Up. I think um, Raquel Diaz, who was uh, Vicky Guerrero's daughter, is in it. Yeah, Sean mm-hmm. Guerrero. Spark Ace will be in the chat room as friend of the show, Prince Magus. I thought so. I, I the, the name rang familiar. Raquel? Ra- a- Ace reporter Ace will yeah, be Rick, also uh, known as the first class aide. Nice. <laughs> nice. Um, hey, I want to touch on this, and we got to roll out here pretty quick. Uh, Wheels, you know why I have you on here. <laughs> you said roll oh, because out. because I'm sexy. Right and I'm <laughs> you <laughs> did. I just cut that to you. <laughs> I was completely not uh, on purpose. Um, so there's something interesting going on in uh, in a in a little town called West Newton this weekend uh, with RWA. Ooh. Now there's there's some <laughs> <laughs> like that. 
reaction. Wow. Can you tell us what is zombies and wrestling doing this weekend? Oh, wow, yeah. A busy weekend for me. <laughs> I must say, because you're not going to be there, because you're podcasting. I sword. got pod camp. I'm sorry. I'll be drinking my face off. Well, that's Six all right. That just means you won't play with zombies with me. No, it's very sad. That's okay. I just I just recently played with zombies. So sword Yes, I, I saw that. So yeah. <laughs> now, so, what, what Sword's talking about is it. this weekend, uh, a company called uh, Principalities of Darkness, LLC, is working in conjunction with RWA Wrestling out of West Newton this weekend with a working title, Wrestlers versus Zombies. And it's going to start at 4 o'clock. And I mean, my God. <laughs> one wrestler that people should know from around this area and maybe ECW, one of the stars will be the franchise Shane Douglas. Mm-hmm. Well, that's and... good because his career died a long time ago. I'm sure he's going to make a great zombie. <laughs> oh. I'm joking. I love you. Oh. I'm wow. joking. I had to make a someone died and they're a zombie joke. And That's true. That, okay, okay. You gotta do that. You can say the same for Kurt Angle with his zombie movies. So. Exactly. I'd right. say the same for. Oh uh, yeah. Like, like, let's put that in perspective. The other zombie movie had Kurt Angle, Sid Vicious, and Kevin Nash. Do I need to say any more? <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> winner. <Wow. laughs> winner. Winner. But uh, anyways, it <laughs> starts at four o'clock this weekend, and. Anybody that comes to the show at 4 o'clock will be guaranteed to be in this movie. And all the wrestling stars of RWA will also be in this movie. It'll be a test shoot from 4 to probably around 6. Mm-hmm. Then the normal wrestling show starts at 7 o'clock, which is, if you see on the screen for your viewers, it's called Ball Free for All 3. It's our third show of three years. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I still don't believe we're running this long. <laughs> but, uh, anyways, it should be a lot of fun. I mean, if you're a wrestling fan, if you're a movie fan, if you're a cheesy horror film fan, come check this out. If you want to know any information, go to rwalive.com. All the information is right there for the show and the movie shoot. If not, check on Facebook at Facebook slash RWA Pro, and it's also there. And hope to see you all there. And if you do, come look for me. I'll be the little black guy that won't die first. <laughs> wow. Feels, exactly. Feels, represent, man. Wow. Like, if feels, you did, I have one very important question. Yes, Mike. Is the ECW zombie going to be there? Ooh. That is a good question. Ooh. Because, At- honestly, I think he's patient zero. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brain. It's been uh, a but... couple years since we first saw him, and I think Sandman has been spreading the zombie plague unknowingly <laughs> via Singapore cane. Wow. Wow. Like, like that, I got a thought disgusting. for you, everybody that's... else. Okay, zombies eat brains, right? <laughs> oh, so if you have a bunch of wrestlers going after zombies, would a brain buster work? <laughs> oh, oh wow! Nice. That's a good question. It ties it all around. Chachi, do we have a verdict? No, it um, wouldn't work. No, it wouldn't work. Okay. Abdul the butcher is not a zombie because I know he likes to feed on people's heads. Yeah, that is true. Wow. Wow. Mm. On that note, yeah, go check them out. Yeah, RWA's been doing real good. They got, uh, I know they got a couple guys in there that are doing doing really nice. Uh, um, uh, one of them was in the Team Taz finishing school or finishing camp or whatever it was. Um, and uh, uh, so Taylor, are you saying plague is spread to all of Team Taz? Team Taz has the zombie plague. Uh, Shane, our good friend Shane Taylor. Uh, <laughs> oh, sure. people. you know what you're going to miss this weekend? Jay oh, Taylor miss. would be. You're going to miss your precious pockets going head to head. Ah, no, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. I'm sorry. I'm Mark for the Pocket Rockets. It's breaking my heart that they broke up. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'll never watch RWA again unless they have a job there. Uh, so, anyways, <laughs> on that note, hey guys, it's time to. I almost said time to remember when. Uh, what did you guys learn from wrestling or zombies this week? Uh, Chachi? Um, nothing. <laughs> I, no, you didn't watch anything. I know. You had I a busy weekend. Uh, yeah, that's, that's fine. 
You're too bad being a, you're too bad too too busy being a. a yeah, I officiated what, what, a wedding this weekend. So what did you learn from officiating a wedding? Is that officiating? Were you like the referee of the uh, of the <laughs> wedding? Like, did the, anyone like pop no, out of the floor no, that of was wedding. below that was below the belt. Technically, I'm sorry. Technically, I was the referee the, the, for the wedding. <laughs> like, I was. In- <laughs> I was in control of the r- of the wedding. Did you call yeah. it right down the middle? I did. Call, I I did call it right down the middle. Uh, Two out of so three yeah. calls. Um, I learned that I'll never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was fun, but it, yeah. it's a lot of work, and I no. It's too much work. Yeah, it's just I don't. Know, I'll never do well, that again. Well, that's an experience, Bobby. In Johnstown, I... what'd you learn? I learned that uh, Seamus may one day have a show on WWE Network called Too Many Limes that will be filmed in front of a live studio audience. <laughs> and and the pet name for Seamus will be Lobster Head. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, little Lobster Head. Man, Mike, what'd you learn? Uh, I, I learned that um, all Miz and Truth need is a tandem finisher and they will be the best tag team of this decade. <laughs> because Alrighty. they they can talk for two hours on a Raw, and I will be thoroughly entertained. I can't get <laughs> enough of those two. They're, they're tremendous. Russell fan, what'd you learn? You guys disappoint me. What? Mike, I almost thought you had it, but you, I, you we haven't even talked about it oh, in yeah. the show. We have a member of the WWE roster that listens to our show. Because our truth said ninja on Raw. Ninja, please. That's right. Our truth listens to the show. Our or or the show. he is indeed the wolf that sends us those fine, fine emails. Maybe that would be I'd more be. awesome. Could be. I see a chocolate hey, crutch. You know what I say to that? <laughs> what, what's that? Fuck <laughs> what you say! <laughs> <laughs> Hot Wheels, what did you learn from wrestling this week? I learned that. If you put CM Punk and Triple H, oh, I'm sorry, wait a minute, Phil Brooks and Paul Levesque together, it's Mike Gold. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, and I, well, hey, from the chat, did anybody put what they learned? That's not nice. I'm sure a wrestle fan will learn how to pick up women eventually. <laughs> um, <laughs> Scrub, uh, Sonic I actually yeah. lift them up when they're unconscious with the chlor. Ah, oh, saw a screwdriver learn that our truth is actually talking to the wolf when he turns his head to the side. <laughs> uh, that's good. That's good. Uh, that tastes like Satan. Yeah, yeah, it is. Like we said, learn that our truth is the wolf in disguise. Uh, hey, Sorgatron. Yay. What did you learn from wrestling? I learned, I learned that size matters. And that's from, <laughs> and, and that's from watching TNA. Oh wow! <laughs> wow, this this works. Trust me. Uh, the, no, but like we talked before, the 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 huge difference it makes for them doing a different venue. You know, I mean, it just yeah. I think we're just same fan, same venue. We're tired of it. Nothing in the impact zone matters. Nope. Nothing in the impact zone matters. It doesn't feel like it matters. It, it felt like a dead indie crowd during that main event on the pay per view. I, I it just with big stars like Kurt does, Angle and it Sting it and Hulk Hogan. Oh my! It doesn't matter. And I'm sorry, I have a secondary one. I probably would have said this first if I remembered it. I love the promo where James Storm said, "I stepped aside for all your big names that are supposed to draw. You haven't drawn shit." Yep. <laughs> that yeah. was tremendous. That was that was a too easily overlooked CM Punk pipe bomb moment that they need to emphasize a bit more. Well, yeah, because great. especially I mean, since at the pay-per-view, this, yeah. oh, none oh. of those four people look like they could be a world champion. Yeah, I, uh, Wheels, what's that? Well, oh, what I was going to say is, it seems like I think the wrestlers out of either Indies or even the two big ones are all of a sudden like all right, it's time to just shoot on everybody and just see what the reaction's going to be. Let's yeah. start pushing buttons. Let's start pushing buttons. And, and Mike, uh, Mike, to your point, their, their world champion doesn't look like he should be world champion. <laughs> he Neither does the 50-year-old man that's going to fight the 60-year-old man. And also, also, uh, just side note, very surprised when I popped in Dylan Dog, it's found Kurt Angle in it. Probably the best movie he's been in. Hmm. Until this recent Warrior, which I hear is doing good at the box office. 
or wait, was it bad? Wait, it's either bad reviews. I heard it got bad, bad reviews. Bad reviews, good box office. Is that why I heard? Or yeah. the other way around? Okay. Well, guys, hey, hey guys, thanks everybody. You've been great. It's been a crazy show tonight, as usual, as I love to have it. Uh, you can find us, as always, over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. There's a lot of blogs going up. A lot of people have a lot to say. Please join the conversation there. You can also join us on Twitter, at Mayhem Show. And if you're watching the video, all of our Twitters are on our names. That's, that's, that's loud. That's very loud. You're, you're Undertaker. <laughs> and you can also contact us into the conversation at Good Time. Good Time. At WrestlingMayhemShow.com. 412-206-WMS0-9670. And, uh, hey, you can join us live and chime in in the chat room here. Like these guys, like Ace Welby, like Lee Match. You. Wow. Sock screwdriver, the Riz. It's okay. They're both loggers. I know them. <laughs> They're both assholes. They don't count. <laughs> they don't count. Uh, we have a small. They're not real people. No, no. Ill Nades, who won a prize a few weeks ago, by the way. Uh, who else is in here? Nades. Uh, HBK fan that joined us earlier. All you guys, thanks for joining us all. Having fun in the chat room all night. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Uh, wait, what's going on? Oh, Pod Camps this weekend. I got some sessions there. We'll be doing the awesome cast live. There may be no pants because it's episode 69, right, Josh? Right. Oh, (laughs) yes. So, no pants, Chachi. So, from the, uh, the Mayhem Studios here at wonderful Pittsburgh, PA. Yes, that's a Furby behind me. Thank you, Mayhem crew. Thank you, Mayhem audience. Have a Mayhem week. Fuck you, Furby. Too many lines has been filmed before the studio audience. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Wait for the perfect time.